Okay, in this lesson, we're going to cover iteration. So iteration is the repetition of a process or a section of code. So whenever you repeat something in a code, that's called iteration. Now, one of the types of iteration is called a for loop. Now, this is the structure of a for loop. So in Python, you start with for, and then you need to put a variable. This could be anything. It could be x, i, count, whatever you want. It's just a variable. Normally, people will just use x or i just because it's easier to remember. Then you put in range, and after that, in parentheses, you need to put the number of loops. So how many times do you want this specific code to be repeated? And then you end it with a colon. You always use colons in, um, in a for loop, at the end of a for loop. Then you indent whatever you want inside the loop. Anything that is indented is going to be inside the loop. Anything that is not indented will not be inside the loop. So you use tab to indent or you just press enter after the colon and it normally does it for you automatically. Now, this is another example. So for x in range, x is just a variable and then it says five. This will loop five times. And then we have print hello, which is indented. So print hello, hello will be displayed five times as you can see on the right side. And the end will only be displayed once because it's not indented. Here is another example for y in range. Again, I just changed the x to y. This is just a variable. It does not matter what you put in here. Um, normally x, y, or i is normally um, a good letter to put. Um, or you might put a whole word that doesn't have to be a letter. So in this time, uh, this time we were looping three times because we put three in the range. And then we're asking the user for a name. And then we're printing your name is name. So as you can see on the top right, it says enter your name Andy, your name is Andy, and then ask three times. This, these two lines of code will repeat three times. Then we're printing the end once or goodbye. Um, in that case, here we have another example for x in range one to eleven. Now, this is one you want. So x is just a counter; it's always a counter, even in this example. But in this example. We want x to be a specific number. So x will start from 1 and it will go up to 10. So we put 1, 11 because the last number does not count. So 11 will not, it's up to 11, but not including 11. So if we print x, it will display 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, because, and so on. x is just a counter. It will just, it will hold all the numbers between that range, the one, the range that we put inside the parentheses. So in this case, 1 to 10. So, because the 11 does not count. With these kind of things, you can do more things with them. For, so here I changed uh, x to count. Again, this is just a variable, does not matter what you put. Uh, for counting range, 1 comma 6. So 1 comma 6 means we're going from 1 to 6, but not including 6. So technically 1 to 5. Then we're displaying, so print count times 10. So count starts with 1. 1 times 10 is 10, as you can see on the right side. Then it goes to 2. 2 times 10 is 20, and so on. It goes up to 5. 5 times 10, which is 50. So this will give us the 10 times table from 1 to 5. Here we have another example. We're asking for the, the user for a number. So we said number equals int, so an integer. So number is just a variable. Input to ask a question and then enter a number. Then we said for i in range. Again, that's just the range. And then the range is number. So because we put number here, this time it will loop depending on the number of times that the user enters. So if the user enters five, this for loop will loop five times. So everything inside the loop will loop five times. So if you look at the example on the right side, enter numbers, enter a number, I put number five, and then it looped five times. It displayed hello five times. So here you can allow the user to control how many times the loop will happen. You can also do one comma number if you want a specific range and so on. Here we have another example. It says we're asking the user for a number, line one. Then we said for counting range, one comma six. So this will loop from one to five, but not including the six. So we're not including the six because the last number does not count in Python. But be careful in the exam, the last number will count. So in the exam, when they use one comma six, it will mean it will loop from one 
up to six and including six. Then we're printing number times count. So this will print whatever the user enters times count, which is the counter. So if I put 100, this will display the times the 100 times table from one to five. 